Add part of a new campaign from CAMH, Canada's top mental health hospital, marking World Suicide Prevention Day, which is today. To talk more about that, I'm joined by Dr. Juveria Zahir. Good morning to you, doctor. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. I think when people watch this, um, this video, and that was just 15 seconds of this video, it, it really does put things into perspective. And I'll be honest, we, we don't typically talk about suicide uh, in, in mainstream media, but it's something that we need to talk about. Can you tell me a little bit about this campaign, the making of this campaign, and, and everything behind it? Well, we know that in Canada, we lose someone to suicide, uh, 11 people per day, 11 lives, 11 families, 11 communities. And so it was our goal with Not Suicide, Not Today, uh, to give people a pledge, something that we can take as an organization, that we can take as a friend or a family member, to say that today is the last day we lose someone to suicide. And if we all say Not Today together, it makes it easier to say when we're alone. Uh, it's our goal that if someone sees this campaign and they're struggling, they will see that they matter. And if they can keep themselves safe for one more day, that gives us time time to connect them with the treatment that they deserve, time to engage friends and family and change the conversation, time to create a world where every life is worth living. Dr. Zahir, uh, we are in the middle of a, a world pandemic, and undoubtedly this, this puts this more into the spotlight. Can you talk about how this pandemic is affecting mental health right now? You know, as a suicide researcher and an emergency department psychiatrist, more people have come to me asking about suicide and suicide prevention over the last six months than ever before. I think what the pandemic is showing us is that we're in the midst of a shared trauma. We're all experiencing anxiety, fear, worry for our loved ones, experiences of social isolation. And it's my hope that with the pandemic, we can see that mental health is health. And now is the time to invest uh, as much as we can in each other um, and in our mental health. We are looking at some of the statistics here in Canada, and one of the ones that was featured in um, that video that we saw, 4,000 people die by suicide every year. For each person we lose to suicide in Canada, at least 7 to 10 others are deeply affected. And in fact, that number we don't always focus in on because all of those loved ones around the person who had died by suicide, it's with them for the rest of their life. So can you talk about some of the supports that are there? Yeah, I think when people are suffering from suicidal thinking, um, it can make you feel like the world is a scary place and that you are, you're a burden. But we do know that when people lose someone to suicide, it's extraordinarily traumatic. You know, feelings of abandonment and guilt and fear and sadness and shame. So it's our hope that by shining a light on this issue, we can overcome the, the shame and the stigma. There are resources that exist for people who have lost a loved one to suicide. On CAMH.ca, we have a section for people so they can understand what's available to them in their area. But I think the most important message is that you're not alone. Uh, that this isn't a crime or a choice and that there are treatments that work and hopefully we can learn from these tragedies to make sure it doesn't happen to another person or another family. Dr. Zahir, what, what sort of things should we be looking for in our loved ones, those close to us, uh, signs, signals that we need to potentially step in and, uh, and help? I think we know about one out of every 20 Canadians is experiencing suicidal ideation or suicidal thinking at any given time. If a loved one says to you that they're having suicidal thoughts, I think it's important to remember not to be afraid um, to connect and to support them through it and to help them get connected with resources. I think when you, people know their loved ones really well, and if you notice a change in your loved one, a change in their sleep, maybe they're isolating themselves more, maybe they're more irritable, maybe uh, they're more tearful. Anytime you notice a change in a loved one, it is completely reasonable and it's a wonderful thing to reach out and say, I love you, are you okay? How can I help? And I think sometimes we're afraid to open a can of worms or to say the wrong thing. Um, but love is never the wrong thing and care is never the wrong thing. Well said. Uh, Dr. Zahir, can you please mention your website again if people are looking for more information? Society can change. Uh, so CAMH.ca, C-A-M-H.ca, will provide information on how to give help and how to get help. Appreciate it. A really important conversation that we need to continue to have. Thank you for taking the time today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, 6.37, that is your time right now. We're going over to you, Devo. Uh, thanks a lot, Mel, and that is a very important conversation for sure. Thank you for that. And we are talking about sports, and sometimes that is the escape for a lot of people. So what is it that you do to have that good luck charm for your special team or that superstition?